Talk of console wars has dominated video games for years. There are gamers who swear by the benefits of gaming in front of a keyboard and mouse on a custom-built PC, while others prefer the convenience and ubiquity of consoles like the Xbox and PlayStation. Those console brands in particular have built a name for themselves as powerhouses in the world of convenient at-home gaming. Microsoft sold 30 million units of the Xbox One console between its release in November 2013 and the end of 2017. Sony sold 73 million units of the PlayStation 4 console in that same time period. Video games are a big business. In 2018, video games and esports generated about $24.4 billion in revenue, about $2 billion higher than 2017. The industry is expected to hit $31 billion by 2023. But at the same time, console sales are falling. Console sales were forecast to decline by 12% in 2019, compared to the year before. But there's a new player in the game, streaming video game platforms. The reason that streaming is appealing to consumers in a vacuum is that it obviates the need to purchase a console. You could play from anywhere, on any device, at any time. And you don't need to worry about your hardware becoming obsolete. Google Stadia, Microsoft's Project xCloud, and NVIDIA's GeForce Now make it easy to play top-tier games without the top-tier console or PC. The subscription-based services stream video games from high-end gaming machines through the cloud. And that means the future of video games may no longer need the console. Video games are a phenomenon that have largely taken shape over the last 50 years. Arcades and at-home consoles launched in the early 1970s and quickly flourished into a booming industry. Magnavox presents Odyssey, the electronic game of the future. The Atari video computer system is 20 cartridges with 1,300 game variations you play on your own TV set. But those really were the only options for gaming in the beginning, at least until the personal computer became popular. The PC brought with it a new way to play with friends, too, as the advent of the internet meant more and more people were hopping online. But consoles weren't there yet. It's largely the famed release of the PlayStation 2 in 2000 and the original Xbox in 2001 that brought console gaming into the form we know today. Those consoles were praised at the time for their breadth of content and specs, and largely saw rave reviews. But the feature that was arguably the most ambitious for these consoles was their internet connectivity. The original iteration of the PlayStation 2 didn't come with internet connectivity built in. It was sold as a separate accessory, but the original Xbox did. And both Sony and Microsoft launched online services for these consoles about a year after their release. Sony's online connectivity was limited and largely relied on individual game makers to facilitate the servers for those games, much like how PC gaming works. But Xbox launched a whole new subscription model as a way to manage online gaming. Xbox Live. Xbox's subscription service facilitated online gaming of legendary titles like Halo 2 and created a cultural phenomenon of playing with anyone at any time around the world. There were a couple of caveats to online play though. The first was that you had to have a fast enough internet connection. And the second was the requirement that the person you were playing with had the same console as you regardless of whether the game was available on multiple platforms. This lack of cross-platform playability has been a problem in the gaming industry for years, even as the new generation of consoles were released. The Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 came with exclusive games that would only be played on their platform and on their servers. It suddenly became important which console you had and which your friends were playing on. The PlayStation 3 came with the new PlayStation Network, a free platform that allowed users to get online with an optional premium PlayStation Plus that gave users special perks and discounts. And massively successful video games like Grand Theft Auto Online had tens of millions of players around the world who only saw fellow players on the same console. But fast forward to 2020, and the sentiment of the walled garden of online gaming is starting to change. Games like Fortnite, Rocket League, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare have done away with this and allowed anyone with any console to play each other. And these games have been massively successful. As of March 2019, Fortnite has 250 million people logging in to play with others. Suddenly, consoles are becoming less and less important. Performance on both the Xbox and the PlayStation is solid, 
and more games are starting to allow you to game with others regardless of what you're playing on. So is there a need for consoles anymore? They know consoles are going away. They know that streaming in 20 years is going to be so ubiquitous that you're just not going to need a console. Gamers have been wanting to take their video games with them for years, and console makers are starting to provide. Services like PlayStation Now and Xbox Play Anywhere stream your console's games to a screen of your choice. But these have been imperfect solutions that still rely on you to shell out the cash for a console to begin with. OnLive and GeForce Now changed that, and they were the first real streaming services for games that used off-site, company-owned hardware to deliver games to users. And now, Google Stadia has entered the mix and promised 4K gaming over the internet entirely on Google's servers. All you need is an account, a screen, and a controller. Stadia even has a selection of games it includes in its paid subscription for $9.99 a month. If you go with the free version, you'll have to buy the games yourself. Microsoft has also started planning its foray into the streaming game wars. Project xCloud is meant to take on Google directly, streaming games from Microsoft's own cloud computing infrastructure. And really, it makes sense that these are the two big players in the streaming gaming industry right now. Google and Microsoft are responsible for a combined 19.5% of cloud infrastructure services in 2018. Microsoft Azure is 15.5% of that. Combine that with Microsoft's mastery of gaming with its Xbox platform, and the company stands a real chance to take hold of the streaming video game industry. Delivering a seamless streaming experience really is a function of data centers more than anything. I mean, the technology, knowing that, you know, Gaikai and OnLive had the technology 10 years ago and it was not perfect, but it worked. And here we are 10 years later, you know, EA's doing it on mobile phones. I mean, I've seen it. And, and EA is, you know, a, a small T tech company, unlike Amazon, Apple, Google, you know, Microsoft, Sony, or bigger T tech companies. In short, these companies could drive people to streaming instead of to the store to buy a console. So what does all of this new tech mean for the future of consoles? Can Stadia really replace them? So Stadia has been a great idea. It's been a lot of fun to play at home, but I've noticed in the community, especially on Reddit, people are upset about a bunch of things, whether it's a lack of updates or a lack of games. Stadia is not necessarily a concern for Microsoft or Sony, who've now announced Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. Xbox Series X seems like it's going to be more of a service in addition to a console, so you might see xCloud built out into that, where maybe console owners get access to streaming video games, or just people can go out and buy a streaming subscription from Microsoft. Microsoft is banking on the future of streaming games with its project xCloud. But in this first iteration, there are just too many opportunities for streaming to go wrong, particularly when gaming on the go. At times, playing on 4G LTE meant frozen screens, choppy audio, and controls having a mind of their own. And Stadia itself isn't ready to fully take on video game consoles. You need one of Google's latest smartphones to play on the go, or a computer running Chrome if you want to play at home. Some of these problems are growing pains for any new service, but others are out of any one company's hand. So what needs to change? 5G could be the linchpin in making a service like this work. The increased speed and throughput could mean even users in a crowded city could see lag-free gaming. In urban areas like cities, you have wireless carriers launching what's called millimeter wave 5G, and that's about 10 times faster than 4G LTE. Now, there's also the sub six gigahertz 5G, which isn't much faster than 4G LTE. So what you really need is more areas with the millimeter wave 5G so that people with Stadia can play games with fast enough speeds to connect online and stream all these graphics. But 5G is only available in select locations by most providers in the US, with them promising to expand in 2020. And that technology too is in its early stages. Some early testing of 5G has found that speeds are largely dependent on how close you are to the tower, or if you have a clear line of sight, and more. The solution for 5G is put a tower on every single streetlight, which means the real estate's there, you know, the power supply is there, and you know, it doesn't go through glass, so we're all gonna have to have some kind of router that has an external 
receiver. And suddenly everybody's gonna have internet everywhere and super high speed. That's the best thing that could happen to any content owner who wants to distribute their content. Then there's the service itself, which only has a handful of games to play. Google has announced that it will add 120 titles to its service in 2020, but until these games are available, there could be little incentive for people to take the service seriously. And that really is what could make or break a streaming service like this. The more people that join, the more people there are for companies to cater to, and more players to interact with. This is where a service like Google Stadia could live or die. Google is known for how readily it will kill a service if it's unpopular. So one, one of my biggest fears with Stadia still remains, and that's that Google has canceled dozens of products in the past that they don't take off or it decides that it's just no longer interested in the market. And I think Google could still potentially do that with Stadia one day. If people don't buy it, they could just say, okay, we're ending this service, it was a fun run, and maybe license the technology to other companies instead of fully supporting it itself. Plus, other companies have different solutions for how to game anywhere. Take Nintendo's Switch console which gives you the ability to take the same console you play at home with you on the go, or the growth of the video game industry on mobile devices. A study from Activision Blizzard and NewZoo found that 2.4 billion people would play a mobile game in 2019. That study found that one in two apps opened in a seven-day period were games. This might not be enough to end consoles altogether in the near future, but there are more and more ways to get your gaming fix without buying one. There's a portion of the population who will just never buy a console, but it doesn't mean consoles go away. If Microsoft and Sony make that a really good experience, they're gonna have a, a, a really faithful group of consumers who will support their consoles. I just think each console generation gets smaller. And what I can't predict is what these consoles will do for me other than play games.